What's up, everybody? Welcome to Casual Shenanigans Tech, a podcast all about your technology and computer build related questions. With me, one of your hosts, Jeremiah and Dave. Hey, guys. Uh, let's start the show, as we always do, with telling you what the show is. Uh, <laughs> this is the, the Little Brother Podcast to Casual Shenanigans Gaming. You guys write into casual shenanigans at gmail.com. We answer your uh, computer build questions and any other tech questions you might send in, and we help you guys uh, get awesome gaming computers put together or fix the ones you currently have. So, this was basically show. a humanitarian yeah. effort to avoid Joel falling asleep on the podcast, like the main podcast. It was yeah. uh, it was really for us to just avoid that scenario again. <laughs> uh, but we will start the show as we always do with the rig report. Rig report. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> uh, so do you remember last time I told you that uh, my Plex server was having issues because that two terabyte hard drive was... Uh... Yes. Okay. So... I did a error recovery, like I let Windows find and fix errors, scan and attempt recovery of bad sectors, and it fixed it. And everything has been totally fine. Until today. <laughs> the server started coming and going, uh, and was just starting to be a little weird. And the health thing still says it's at 100%, but I just don't really trust it. So uh, I am right now copying everything over to a four terabyte Western Digital external that I bought immediately when things started going south last time. And it's been sitting on top of the smasher in a box ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you were actually prepared and didn't like lose a bunch of data and then go, well, I should probably order a hard drive. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, and Dave, you uh, you have some interesting troubleshooting you've been oh, going through yeah. recently this will kind of be this will be a good bit of a humbling story for anyone who thinks like we just sit on top of a mountain and just dispense sage advice <laughs> uh the only way you get good at computers is by having lots of things go wrong with computers so what what have you been up to it, it's telling jeremiah that i know that we're on a podcast here and we're, we're, we're like recording i know that you probably have some good advice here, but I literally just don't want to talk about it because it's that frustrating. <laughs> really? Yeah, like, I'm going to because uh, oh, okay. I'm probably going right. to rant about it. But like, it's that bad where I'm like, I just don't want to think about it anymore. Um, for rapidly approaching two months now, my internet has been completely unreliable. Like, the modem will lose connection probably six, seven times a day, frequently during like heavy upload use. And, you know, I don't do a lot of uploading, you know, just some 18 gig files like here and there <laughs> or every day. <laughs> um, it's, it really sucks, too, because my ISP, I've been with them for five years now. It's a it's a kind of regional cable company. It's not Comcast or anything, but they were fantastic up until last year when they implemented data caps, uh, 500 gigs for my tier, which is only 25 slash uh, five not fantastic. They implemented caps and then, you know, this reliability issue cropped up and they've gone from being one of my like all time just favorite ISPs. They've been fantastic. 99.9% .9 uptime, no caps to now they have caps and now my internet won't stay connected. And it's gotten to the point now where like when they look up my account, you can kind of hear in their voice or just like, oh, it's this guy again. And I mean, we, Jeremiah, we've gone down the list. I've replaced the cat cable between the modem and the router three times now, mm -hmm. and I can get different results with different cables. Uh, different all cat five cables, cat six cables. Um, I'm not even sure what the yellow one is. Like the one that came with the modem is a yellow cable that I'm assuming is, is just cat five. Um, but that will disconnect, you know, multiple times a day. I swapped it out with a cat five E cable of my own purchasing, <laughs> which has only been down once today, I think, but I have upgraded router firmware. They flash the modem. They've been out here once already. They recapped all of the coax in my house and to the modem for me, like snip the wire, new caps on the end. They went out to the pole, re snipped all the cabling on the pole, took an old filter off and like we tested it. I was watching Netflix in like three browser windows <laughs> all while uh, uploading a YouTube video and it held for 10 minutes. Like I was maxing my connection out. Um, but then within like 12 hours, I was having the, the disconnections again. Um, and like I said, we've just been going down the list and both me and my ISP are kind of both at our wits end right now. It's just the most frustrating thing in the world, especially because I can't predict it. Like it'll go down and I'll spend, you know, 10 minutes in line waiting to talk to a rep. 
and they'll finally pick up and they're like, oh, yeah, we see that your modem's been off a few times today, but, you know, it's connected right now and either uh, it's connected again by itself or I have to, like, uh, you know, let Windows reconnect to actually show that the connection is back there again or I've just gotten tired of waiting and power cycling it myself. But, like, on their end, everything just looks weird until it just goes offline. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, like I said, we're both just kind of at our wit's end, <laughs> both ends of the of the spectrum here. Yeah, it's one of those things where, like, there obviously is something wrong. But you needed to do it. You needed to have the problem consistently. You need to be able to duplicate it to mm-hmm. really narrow down what's happening, which I'm sure you've had this happen a dozen times when a family member contacts you <laughs> or a friend contacts you because there's a problem. Yeah. And then you go to look at it and nothing's wrong. And they make the joke while like, oh, it knows you're here, which I'm not convinced is not true. Um, but my favorite one of those, Jeremiah, I got a phone call once from a, a relative and they go, hey, can you help me out? This this box popped up with a warning. I don't know what to do. And I'm like, OK, where does the box say? I don't know. I hit the X. <laughs> I was just like, well, what, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> Bring it back. Control Z the box. <laughs> Uh, Dave, but, yeah. <laughs> but you're good with computers. <laughs> I used to think so. I mean, I'm not a network guy for sure. Like I can, I know the lingo. I can monitor the connection, but generally I just rely on the internet to be there when I need it, which is frequently <laughs> as it turns Cause, out. Well, cause it needs to be, it needs to be a, you know, a utility. Yeah. It and, needs and to be like that. On the one hand, it's nice that I'm working from home right now. Cause I can, you know, the rep can just come whenever he's coming out again tomorrow to look at the line again. Uh, but on the other hand, like not only is it, you know, YouTube and freelance work, this is affecting and just, you know, my off time, but my actual job is being affected because I'm working from home right now. <laughs> just the, the timing has been has been terrible. Yeah, and, and it is frustrating because if you rely on the Internet for your job, like there's really nothing you can do like you, you just have to f- deal with it. Yeah. And it's not the type of thing where like, oh, you just got to work a little bit harder and you'll figure it out. Like it's really just going to have to be one day you'll be sitting there and go, wait a second. What if, or you'll be doing something else and you'll find an obvious problem that you weren't aware of before, but like you'll see something and go, Hey, wait, that's not supposed to be right. (laughs) But you just kind of have to wait till that happens. And unfortunately can't really make that happen. So, and the worst part is I've had a couple of those like aha moments where I thought I'd solve something like when I replaced the cat five E cable for the third time. And then it worked for like a day and a half perfectly. I was like, no way did I have two bad cables that I went through before I found a third good one. I'm like, what are the odds? But then it went down again today. And then there was a time when I realized that my router was set for IPv6 support, which I don't think my ISP is ready for yet. So I switched it back to IPv4 and it made literally no difference in, uh, in the uptime. And the one that almost got me was, um, for a while, I hadn't tried, you know, the usual like plug the modem directly into the computer. Um, I hadn't done that since December and they're about to send a tech out again. They're like, well, just, you know, plug it in and, and try it and see if it's see if it's like your router that's acting up, not the modem. And I, I switched to the modem and started uploading a YouTube video, like an eight gig one or so. And I had this like, like, oh, crap moment where they were ready to schedule a second tech visit and the modem was working. And I was like has it been my router this whole time? Cause that's, they're going to start charging me for this tech support. If it's, you know, my, yeah. my router, that's the issue. Um, but thankfully, I guess the modem then proceeded to like lose connection like nine times during that upload. So it's, it's definitely not my router, I guess at least. And I mean, if you want to hear about another crazy, I can't believe this actually works. What did we do to your brother's computer? Do you oh, remember? Do we ever talk about I don't that think again? We talked to, I don't think that we talked about that on here. What what the solution was. I, I don't want to really call it a solution. <laughs> but Wait, which thing th- are we talking about specifically? Uh, we're talking about... Did we talk about why the GPU, which slot it would work in? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, so like he, um, he had a 9800 GTX, right? Or mm-hmm. GTX 9800. Yeah. And which, which you'd given him. But I had a, a 660 from Community Member Singularity 80, and we had a 660 TI we were going to put in there. So you go to put it in, it does not work. You switch back to the 9800, it works. <laughs> Same slot. And just because, you know, as you normally do, 
when or not you specifically, but people in general, uh, you know, I was in town at the time you brought it by and you're like, Hey, just in case, take a quick look, make sure I'm not missing anything super obvious. Cause it happens. Like you'll for, you know, yeah, you yeah. forget to plug a power cable in something like that. Well, no, everything looked totally fine. So we started messing with it and I forget which one of us suggested it, but somehow we tried the bottom PCI slot, <laughs> which is the worst and, in theory. And it worked. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be, but it's never the best one. Like it might be equal, but, but that's it. And, uh, I think there were only two slots though, so they might have been equal in this computer, or it's a slow enough card, it doesn't matter. But it worked fine in the bottom slot. Right, right. Swapped the 9800 into that slot, works fine. Put the 660 in the top slot, no, doesn't work. Not only doesn't work, like it wasn't posting. Yeah, it wouldn't post at all. Like no error message, just like the angry beeping that says, you done goofed. <laughs> and these are both PCI Express cards. There should be absolutely no difference. They're using the same power cables. And in theory, a newer card should be more compatible with a newer build. Like, you know, just, yeah, yeah, just this, is a, this is a, um, a 4950K or 4690K. What was it? 4690. I mean, a 4690. Yeah. Like that's a pretty modern chipset too. There should be no reason a 660 Ti doesn't work <laughs> in a 9800 does. But we ended up just leaving it in the bottom slot and we're like, all right. And we ran some tests and it was totally fine. Like games seem to work fine. It doesn't seem to be noticeably bottlenecked. And he's so. like a hundred hours into Fallout Four now. So oh, really, that's it's, cool. It's working. And don't forget too that like that same computer had that motherboard that just randomly, like it completely died. Every other part was fine. The motherboard just gave up the ghost three weeks in. Not like out of the box. It worked. And then it's like, nope, fooled you. It's just it just happens sometimes. And that's the thing is you would think, oh well, the motherboard has a problem again. It's another lemon, which I guess is possible. But we couldn't think of any reason why. It would work with one graphics card that uses a standard <laughs> and not with another graphics card that in theory uses the same standard. I mean, maybe one of them is PCI Express 2 and maybe the 660 Ti is PCI Express 3, possibly. But again, back it should be more backwards compatible. So And at that point, knows? we're just like, you know, Karometer is at zero. If it posts and plays games, just <laughs> box it up. It's done. Exactly. It's not ours. Um, and that leads us to the first question. From Jamison. Jamison actually has two questions. Two questions. Could you hook it up to a TV? He means the potato basher. He never says it. <laughs> oh, wait. The subject line is potato smasher. Two questions. Could you hook it up to a TV via HDMI? And would you build me a potato smasher? Uh, but a little better for around $500 plus your labor fee. So after everything we've just said, this is why I will not build you a potato masher of your very own. Um, Dave, why are there no cheap gaming PCs on the market? Why don't, I mean, obviously this is a market that, that people <laughs> would like, you know, if we could build a PC and sell it for the same price as the PS4, why don't people do it? Why doesn't Dell make these? I mean, there's, there's like no profit in it. There's no overhead. There's just, it's when you're nickel and diming, like the individual parts to get the best deals to, you know, make the budget, you're not going to be making enough money to build and ship these things. Like the time invested is just not there. <laughs> And the only reason that Sony and Microsoft do it is they can sell their console at best consoles sell for a break even. Yeah. Like the PS4 and the Xbox one, I believe both were break even consoles. The PS3 was sold at a loss of hundreds of dollars per console. Yeah. And it wasn't until they made the slim version, were able to streamline the process. They actually started profiting on the hardware. Um, but they make profit off games because they control the games market. So in theory, Steam could make hardware and sell it at a loss if they were interested in it. Uh, but that that's about it. So that's why PCs generally aren't that cheap from a, a manufacturer that's building and selling the whole thing. Yeah, uh, There's just zero profit in it. So I, I will not build you one. Um, not because I don't think it's fun, but because I, you know, $500 plus labor. I don't want to sound mean, but as an adult, my time is worth enough now <laughs> where honestly i don't think it's worth your money to have me do it because the amount of time i'm going to research and do it if it's not just a fun hobby for me like if i'm doing it for multiple people i'm going to want to be making 20 or 30 bucks an hour at least minimum and you know on the low end that's going to add a couple hundred bucks to the build so oh, yeah, yeah. It, it's just it's really not worth it if you're not up to building it yourself that's totally fine you probably could but if you don't want to deal with all that that's totally fine uh, buy a consumer desktop on sale, a regular desktop, add a power supply and a graphics card. Those are super easy things to swap out. 
slickdeals.net uh, is your friend. It is. Uh, next question, though, is could you hook it up to t- a TV via HDMI? Yes. Any graphics card that has HDMI, which is almost all of them in the past five or six years, um, will work with a TV. Uh, it, it'll output fine to a TV. It'll output audio to the TV. All you got to do is plug it in. If it doesn't automatically switch the audio over, like if you still had speakers plugged in or something, you could just have to go into your audio options and switch it. And it works just like a PS4 or Xbox would going into an HDMI port. And as I've discovered, even running, you know, like 100 feet of HDMI to Cat6 back to HDMI also works mostly. (laughs) I don't think Jamison's going to be doing that, but it's good to know. No no one should really do that. (laughs) (laughs) But I did. Uh, next question is Michael. Michael says, question about upgrading his PC. Hello, I bought a Dell XPS 8700. Can you look that up real quick while we do this? Yes. Uh, Dell XPS 8700 last year to have a computer to start playing video games. I should have done more research before buying a computer because it is barely able to run games such as Fallout 4 at a decent FPS at low medium quality. My question is, what parts of my PC should I look into upgrading, and if so, what should I get? I would like to be able to play AAA games at pretty good FPS at medium high quality. Here are my specs. Windows 10, Intel i7-4790, which is interesting. The non-K version is stock at 3.6 gigahertz. I'm not sure if it turbos up to 4. I bet, yeah. But the 4790K is stock at 4, I believe. Um, eight gigs of RAM, Dell motherboard, uh, and uh, Seagate, one terabyte hard drive, 460 watt power supply, and a GeForce <laughs> GT 720. Oh, that's like a home theater graphics card. Yeah. So here's the thing, Michael, and this is your first gaming PC. Like, there's no reason to feel embarrassed about it or anything. You made the classic mistake, though, uh, where you bought a quote unquote gaming computer from a, a, a manufacturer like Dell. So the XPS line is supposed to be their gaming computers, but a GT 720 is like a card you buy. I mean, I don't even really know what the market is. What, how much does that card cost? That's for like, if your integrated graphics, you know, can't handle your media design software or something like that. Like it's, and it really sucks. Cause I'm looking at the 8,700 page on the Dell website here. And it looks like the new card that it, it defaults with is the 660 which would be acceptable for gaming wait they're selling them brand new with 660s uh on the product page for this maybe the model don't, it's the 660 maybe they don't sell now. that model anymore i'd be very surprised if they're selling a new computer with a, a 660 but who knows i mean <laughs> apple does it <laughs> yeah but i mean i i've lost it now where did it go there it is yeah opt for nvidia GE Force GTX 660 <laughs> graphics for smooth, sharp images. <laughs> Do they and, say how much they charge for that upgrade? No, but I can find out. I'm just curious. Okay, now where's where's the option to customize? Why is there an ad for Dropbox on this computer? I I, I don't know, but I'll get back to his question. Um, so your the good news is your processor. Your operating system, your memory, your storage, and your power supply are all totally fine. You have nine-tenths of an awesome gaming computer. (laughs) Well, maybe four-fifths. You have four-fifths of an awesome gaming computer. You just need a graphics card. With your power supply, you should be able to directly swap it out. Do they have any information, Dave, about what type of power supply that is? Like, do we have PCI plugs or anything? I would bet that it would, seeing it does have the 660 on the product page, but... I'm still scrolling up and down this monolithic website looking for the customize or add to cart button. So they probably they must not sell it anymore. If, the, if you can't, if there isn't a giant button you can click on to do that, they probably don't sell it. That could be it. Yeah. Yeah. So let's assume if you can put a 660 in it, he's got to have at least one PCI Express plug. Um, so my suggestion is going to be a GTX 950. I don't know what your budget is, but I'm assuming you'd want to get going on this thing with the minimal pain since you've already been through some (laughs) um but yeah i'm gonna recommend the uh the gtx 950 what do you think dave yeah solid card 
Now, if you're like, oh, well, I, you know, I don't, I can spend more than 150 bucks because the one I'm going to send you a link to is $150. It's a single fan, short design will fit very nicely in your case. Um, you could even overclock it a little bit if you want to, but you definitely don't have to. And it has, it'll be a safe yes. bet for that power supply, most yes. likely. Yes. Um, so that's 150. If you can spend more than 150, um, if you can spend $200, then a uh, AMD R9 two, uh, 380X, 380X would be a good option. Uh, if you want to go higher than that, GTX 970. But I'm guessing you say you just want to play low to medium quality modern games. Uh, you'll be able to play medium to high quality on most games, most likely. I don't know what FPS you like playing at and stuff, but a GTX 950 will be totally adequate for anyone who is curious. That's very, very similar to the GTX 760 that's in the potato masher. So anytime we recommend a GTX 950 and we say it'll be fine, that's probably because I mean, I'm very confident in his performance based on how well the potato masher is doing. So um, the rest of your build is great. You should be totally fine with a 950. Nice. All right. Um, and then our next question comes from I'm um, really sorry. I'm going to say your name. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Jean Francois. That sounds right, actually. He's Canadian or French. I'm going to go with Canadian. Yeah, Canadian. All right. Hi, I'm looking to build an entry level gaming PC with my 12 year old son for his birthday. We're in Canada. Well, I could have reread the email before I <laughs> said all that. That would have answered it. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, Jean Francois. I'm, I'm a typical stupid American and really bad at pronouncing sure it's not one? other people's names. Juan, Juan Franza, uh, that would be like the Hispanic pronunciation, I think, but I don't really I bet know. we're probably both wrong now. Yay! <laughs> uh, we're in Canada and the exchange rates have destroyed our purchasing power. America, America. <laughs> uh, but I think I've got a good idea on a $600 Canadian rig, excluding Windows and the monitor. Most of the games his son plays are of the indie variety. He's really into Rust now, Minecraft, Civ Five. There's also the occasional AAA title like Fallout 4 and Dark Souls 3 or XCOM. Oh, your 12-year-old son's playing Dark Souls 3. Well, I see you're trying to build some patience into that child. <laughs> <laughs> you're building character. <laughs> but dad, I want to eat dinner. Not to you clear the, the, the demon hellfire <laughs> boss. I don't know what the names are. Also, you beat it, but now the floor fell out and you have to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have the specs below from PC Park Picker. There's clearly always a trade-off between the CPU and the GPU. There's also the issue of whether it's worthwhile dropping those prices down a notch and adding an SSD for the OS. Secondly, we've never built a PC before. Is this something that we'll be able to do? We're relatively computer literate. We've just bought pre-made systems in the past. Appreciate your advice. Here are the details. Uh, the office listed looks a little higher because it excludes rebates. I'm not sure what he means by office. The price. I'm assuming it's an autocorrect from price. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm on the Canadian version of the site. Here's what he's picked out. A, hmm, I wonder if the price has dropped. Something must have dropped out of this list. I'm going to have to find it because the price looks way cheap here. Um, but an Athlon 860K, 3.7 gigahertz quad core, an Asus FM2 Plus motherboard, 8 gigs of Mushkin memory, 1 terabyte Seagate hard drive, GTX 960 graphics card. That's the thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. It dropped it dropped out of the list. Um, a Cooler Master N200 case and a Corsair 430 watt power supply. That comes out to 384 Canadian dollars because the GTX 960 in his build was a whopping $283. What? Okay, I'm looking right now for a, uh, a better one. Are you looking Canadian? I am. I'm on okay. ca.partpicker.com. Okay, so... I'm curious because most of the rest of these prices actually don't look that terrible. Like they don't look that, they, and they're pretty much the same as when he sent us this email. Oh, they don't look that they change that much. Our video cards just brutal. Oh, okay. the The lowest two sixty is two thirty eight. Nine nine sixty. I said two sixty, didn't I? Wasn't that a that wasn't Nvidia card, but that was a long that was a long time ago. Yeah, nine sixties. They start at two thirty eight. And they Oof. top out at 348. Jeez. So here's, I mean, the, the 238 one is an EVGA, which is nice. I mean, but not that nice <laughs> here. Enjoy that, I guess. Oh, I'll put it. I, uh, I got you. There we go. 
that extra character at the end of the URL there. GTX 960 for 240. Ugh. Um, I mean, that would, that would work in his budget. That would work in his budget. Um, a 950 is 205. So, what do you think? Uh, nah, let's just go with a 960. Like, you know, what they say, buy once, cry once. <laughs> well, they do. Um, here's what I'm curious about. This is overall, this is a decent build. So, you've done a good job. Um, that processor, I want to see what else can we get for 100 Canadian dollars for processors. I just, because I don't know the market well enough. Mm. I'm curious what that gets us in Intel. Um... Not much. Okay. Wow. That was depressing. <laughs> you guys, this dollar is bad. Sorry. Um, sorry. <laughs> Buy more oil. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I don't know. That's, that's a little rough. The only other AMD options, really, we could get a FX 4300. I don't really know how I feel about that. This isn't very good. This is all bad. Um, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna delete the 960 you added in there. Um, we're gonna add in the cheaper 960 we found. Um, let's see, is his price was 689 Canadian. Uh, Dave, what do you think about um, whether or not he should get an SSD with this budget? I have officially lost my tab. There it is. Let's see. Now, he didn't have one on there originally, right? He didn't. He's curious if he should drop the quality of anything else to, to do that. Not with how expensive the graphics cards are going to be. Yeah. An SSD, you can upgrade later and just mirror your hard drive to upgrade. Yeah. And for gaming, honestly, that terabyte hard drive is going to be plenty fast. It's not going to be a big deal. You're not going to notice a big difference. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm going to add to this list a Hyper 212 Evo because you want to overclock that processor some. Um, to answer your question about how hard will this be, if you are computer literate enough to put this list together uh, and you say you, you understand computers decently well, you can definitely build this. Yeah, yeah. This is a very easy build. I've never used your case before, but it's a Cooler Master, so I'm assuming it's a pretty easy one. Um, I'm going to look it up really quick, just so I'm not talking out the side of my head here. But yeah, that, that's, a, that's a perfectly normal looking case. Um, there shouldn't be anything about this build that's difficult. Like, this is a build, I could do this build in like 30 minutes or less. So if you take your time, you watch a build guide on YouTube or something, this is a very middle of the road build. Actually, the only thing hard about it is probably that Cooler Master Hyper 212 I dropped in there. So feel free to skip that <laughs> if you don't want to overclock. But um, because it's an AMD processor, it is going to be a little bit slower per clock than Intel. So if you really want to make this build last for a while, it will be in your best interest to try to boost that thing to like four to four and a half gigahertz if you can. And it should overclock fine. Uh, but you can do that later down the road. You don't have to do that immediately, of course. But I'd say the rest of your build looks pretty good. I am not intimately familiar with all the parts, but they all look good. So I don't think there's anything we'd change. I agree. That's a very solid build. Yep, that's a uh, good job, especially if it's your first time putting a list together. That's a very, <laughs> yeah, it's like, probably the same thing I'd put together, <laughs> you know, swap a couple parts. If you're not sure, like if you're going to be able to pull this build off and you come up with a list like that, You've, you've got a handle on it. You're doing good. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, that is all our questions for this week. So nice. thank you everyone for writing in. We have more questions, of course, stacked up in the queue, ready to go. We're trying to record these episodes on a, like more often than every other week when we release them. We're trying to you know, record them every week if we can, um, because we'd like to catch up and get to this backlog uh but thank you to everyone who writes in it's actually kind of impressive the amount of you who now trust us with your <laughs> with your stuff and we've had uh we've had more people write in and say that their builds went really well um i did not save any of those emails ahead of time but people have written in and everything's been going great so you know what jeremiah sounds like a segment for the rig report next time <laughs> oh, i'll have to go find those <laughs> 
All right, but uh, thank you everyone for coming out. As always, you can find us at casualshenanigans.com, casualshenanigans at gmail.com if you want to be a part of the show, if you have a question to submit. And then you can find us on Twitter at casualshenanigan, at Evil Viking, at Germ Gaming. Anything else you want to mention before we go? I think that covers it. See you guys next time. All right, guys. See you next time on Casual Shenanigans Tech. <laughs>